The nearest Build-A-Bear is a two-hour drive from my house. Said two-hour drive would be for the four-year-old who started screaming when I told her she couldn't get the cute sparkle bunny she saw on the ad. This is why I like Netflix better than cable TV. No ads that result in an extremely uncalled-for tantrum. So no, no way in hell would I be going to build a bear two hours away with a screaming toddler to blow some thirty, forty dollars on a plush she'd be bored of in approximately three weeks. <sighs> but it was almost her birthday, and I've been too busy with work and Jacqueline to sit down and browse Amazon, much less go to an actual store to find her a gift. I want the cute sparkle bunny, Mama. I need it, Jacqueline whimpered as I laid her to bed that night. She was no longer screaming and crying, but she wouldn't shut up about that bunny. I know, baby girl, I told her yet again. I'll tell you what, we can go shopping on Friday, all right? See if you can find something even more sparkly, yeah? Jax wasn't convinced. She mumbled something. I kissed her forehead and said good night. Maybe in the morning she'd forget about it, I thought. I prayed. I sat down with my laptop, catching up on any emails I may have missed from work. There was an eBay email, which I always deleted, but I had an idea. Maybe I could find her coveted Build-A-Bear bunny there. It would certainly be cheaper, and hopefully if I found one, it wouldn't be too used. I try my luck. About the fifth page in, I found one. Brand new. Only $20. Buy it now, even. Perfect. I wasted no time in ordering it. Half of me wanted to tell Jax immediately, but the logical half screamed that she's sleeping and needs to learn to take no for an answer. The package arrived a day before her birthday. I pulled the bunny out of the box and inspected it. Felt a bit lumpy, maybe, but what do I know? Never had a Build-A-Bear. I contemplated wrapping it or just giving it to her right then and there. I opted for the latter. She'd finally started behaving, so I wanted to reward the good behavior. Jax, I said as I approached her room. Yeah, Mama? I want you to know that I'm very proud of you. I know you were upset about not getting the bunny. You started handling it like such a big girl. Jacqueline beamed. I stopped crying. I love my bear, too, she said, holding out one of her stuffed animals she at one point had lost interest in pretty quickly. He loves you, too, baby girl. And so do I. Happy birthday! I held the bunny out for her. Jack screeched and grabbed it and squeezed me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She's so cute. I love her. Thank you, Mama. She hugged the bunny. A slight wince as she did so. What's that? She asked, poking the bunny's back. I took the bunny back momentarily and prodded it. I, I don't know, I said. Kind of strange. She shrugged and grabbed it back, thanking me again. I didn't think anything of it, nor did Jackson, until a couple nights after her birthday. Mama? She asked as I was leaving her room. Sparky smells kind of gross. Can you give her a bath? Yeah, sure, I responded. Maybe it wasn't so brand new after all. I can tomorrow if you want. Tonight? Bear will stay with me. Oh? All right, if you want. I was a bit taken aback then. Maybe it came from a smoker's home. Jax and I are both sensitive to cigarette smoke. I took the bunny and said good night again. Ugh, I noticed the gross smell immediately. Bringing the toy close to my nose to inspect further... I almost dropped it as I gagged. What the fuck? I checked the tag for laundry instructions. Surface wash only. Of course. Pfft. Let me tell you, I scrubbed the shit out of that thing and it still smelled rotten. 
That minute of all times was I reminded of the odd lumps. I felt around again. There was no way this was just normal stuffing. I grabbed a pair of scissors and snipped a few stitches, the stench hitting me like a fucking train. I fought the urge to gag as I removed enough stitches to peer into it. I stumbled back, dropping the bunny to the ground as multiple small bones clattered out. A small, mangled head peeked out of the opening. Gray matter, coagulated blood pooling out like sludge, staining the bunny's white fur. I covered the mess with a towel and ran to get Jackson and take her to the neighbors before I called the police. I didn't want to know the specifics. I didn't know what sick fuck did this. I don't want to know who the child was. I just know the eBay account I ordered from was deleted, and they they found the monster. Unless I knew, the less Jax could find out. That was that, I thought. I had the night and most of the next day to come to terms with it. To cry, then to compose myself. Like I said, my girl doesn't need to know any of this. I need to stay strong for Jax. Mama, look! Jacqueline exclaimed the next afternoon when I picked her up. My stomach dropped. Uh, Jax? Baby, uh, w w where did you get that? My new friend. I met her this morning. She said thank you for cleaning Sparky. Jax almost threw it into my arms before she skipped toward her house. I looked down at the bunny. The police had it. There's no way this was the one. No matter what. Here was her bunny. Clean and sparkly as ever. A fresh rose scent in its fur. I felt a hand on my arm. Jax? I thought you... A child, barely older than Jacqueline, stared up at me with a soft smile. I felt a chill run down my spine, but I reached out to touch her hair. It was velvety and cold and dewy. I glanced at my house, at the sound of Jacqueline's voice beckoning me back inside. I turned back and the girl was gone. You're welcome, sweetheart. <laughs>